Hey YouTube, Mike here. How are we doing today? Hope we all have a very safe and productive week. All right, today um, I'm going to be doing um, a demonstration and an explanation on something that I get quite a bit of questions on and quite a bit of uh, questions and comments on past videos that I've used the system and that's the LR32. Uh, and what I use the actual system for. Um, on a lot of my past videos, um, you see me use it and did a quick demonstration um, to make the um, shelf pins. Okay, now the system, besides the shelf pins, it could be used to bore um, the cup holes for the European hinges and now the new um, 500 um, domino connector system by incorporating two five millimeter, three or four five millimeter holes on the sides of the casework so that you can make the box with those removable um, uh, pieces. So today we're gonna go over the parts, how to set it up, how to adjust it, and then we'll make one set of holes because I'm gonna be using this um, two foot by four foot piece of um, plywood Eventually, I'm going to be making a, a new uh, drawer system for all of the extra fest tools that, that I have purchased. Okay, so for starters, um, you need the LR32. We'll go over that in a minute. And you're going to need one of the, um, it's the FS1400 um, 2-LR32. It's basically the rail system with indexing holes. These can be connected just like a standard rail with the connector pieces so that you can make this over eight feet long. The LR32 system is really designed for the 1010 router, but can be used with the 1400 router and I'll show you um, what they give you to do that. The system comes with the base plate which fits onto the rail system and then indexes in each hole and as you plunge the router, move it along, pushing it down, making your holes. It comes with three different bits. It comes with a flat bottom bit, five millimeter, and it comes with a through bit in case you're going to make shelf pins through the center of a casing. And then it comes with kind of a Forstner looking cup bit for the European style hinges. Today we're going to be using the flat bottom bit. Now, looking at these bits, they're threaded inside, so it's a bit the same bit that's on the uh, domino, five millimeter. So it's got a thread inside. It comes with two clamps, these screw clamps comes with two positioning rods, which I'll get to in a minute. comes with Allen keys. And it comes with these two um, depth pieces that are used in different increments. You have 9.5, 32, which is on one side, and then 16 on the other. For this, we're going to be using it for shelf, if you're going to be using it for shelf pins, you want it to be what they call 16 up and down. So when you're positioning it onto the rail, can we see it? Yes, you can. You want it so that you can see the 16 and it's down and up facing you. You tighten the screw, this thumb knob, when you place it onto the board, it stops at a specific position to give you the first index at the bottom. And then each one corresponds up the board. When you flip this down to the other side, flip this whole thing around, now you'll have the same on this side with the same position that this first pin peg is at. All right, 
first thing you want to do is you want to, when you, if you, when you get it, you have to adjust the, the starters, the slop. So if there's any slop in the plate, you want to adjust the two little regular screws that adjust the nylon bearings that will stop the slop. The second thing you want to do is you want to take both step stops and you want to zero them out. So you want to take, very hard to see, but there's a zero on this black part and there's a zero on here. You want to zero them out. Tighten it down. You want to position them onto the rail and just tighten it down. Now, they are spring loaded, so they will move. Then you want to get this notch right here. in line with the notch right there. And let me take this off and I'll show you real up close. So you see you want that notch to fall right with that pin. Right when it's on and then just move it forward and you see it falls right in. Now you do that to both of these. Now if they're out of position you take your Allen key you loosen this up and you move this back and forth so that it falls into the notch and then give it a good tighten down. Now I already did that to mine. So you're going to do it to both of them. Alright, let's get this back up. Alright, you have these set. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to mount the plate. Onto the 1010 router. Well now let me just show you the 1400 to get it over with. On the 1400 router, and these are great, I love saving these little output pins. There's two machine screws. Comes in a plastic bag. And on the plate, you have two screw holes right here. For the 1400 router, you're going to thread the plate on into these right here. The 1010 router just slips right in. Just get this over here, out of the way. So, oh, there's one other thing, a centering mantle that comes with the LR32. You want to use the larger of the two collets that are in your 1010 router. You got a quarter inch collet, then you have the little larger one. Basically, you just want to push the centering mandrel into the collet. You don't have to tighten it down, and then drop it. Now, you, you can take off the depth gauge from the front of the router. You don't need it. It'll just get in the way. You have a notch here on the router. You have a notch on the plate. You slide the plate right on to where it meets the notch and then plunge the router through and then tighten up and lose the other screw. Get that back together and we'll do it over again. Okay. So get it back, plunge it through until it meets right, gets right through this piece. Keep it about center and then tighten up both plates really good, both screws really good. 
Now, you don't need the centering mandrel no more. It is a little tough in there. Lock this back. And then this will come right out. You don't need it. Now you're set. Take your bit. Get it into the collet. And lock it down. It takes a couple minutes to get this thing set up the right way. But then after, you can do whatever you want all day. Tighten up your bit. Okay. Now, the other thing you want to do is get your rail set it on the board, set this down, and then bring the rail all the way over, and then plunge down so you can see where you want your depth. And in this case, my depth, you zero out the router, And then you plunge your depth, and now I am all locked in. So now the router is set. Now we're going to set up the rail. With the rail, depending on what you do, now let's just say you want to do the SYS drawers. The SYS drawers in the instruction sheet tells you that the front of the drawer is 58 millimeters from the edge and it's 225 millimeters from the two farthest holes now you have a middle hole that's another 88 millimeters but four of them are more than adequate enough for any of the festivals so you want to start, I want to be at 58 millimeters. So I'm going to take my stops and I'm going to adjust them to 58 millimeters. You do both of them. Now remember, both of them are going to be at zero because you calibrated this. And I got more light. So I can see. There we go. 58 millimeters. All right. I'm going to clamp my board down. And then I'm going to put in my clamps here just so that they're in now. I'm going to make sure I'm pushed up against. Can you hear it? I'm pushed up against. Now, I take my first step stop here and I pull it back tighten this down doesn't have to be super tight you want the pin I'll take the camera off in a second and show you what I'm talking about get it on get it on now you're on let's get the camera off and I'll show you You see how that's right up against the piece of wood? So now this is perfectly down 58 millimeters. This one of course is not, I didn't tighten that down so good. Give me a second. I know you're staring at the rail. Okay. I apologize for that. All right. I think that's enough of removing this thing. All right, now I'm going to clamp my piece of wood down, uh, I mean the rail onto the piece of wood because we're going to remove these stops. Now I remove, I remove, 
Leave them, don't move them, don't touch them because you're going to need them when you're doing on the other side. Now I'm going to put my router. Now, when you're doing, there's a little view hole here. See that view hole? Sometimes what you could do is you don't necessarily have to have shelf pins all the way up. You know, you're going to have two holes here that's going to be for the um, plate for the European hinges, two here, two down here. Then you might have six, eight, seven, whatever, holes in the center for shelves. Uh, they don't, you don't necessarily have to have them all the way down in the bottom because remember you might have pots, pans, whatever. In, in, but, you know, in a case where you're going to do an SYS system, you want them all the way because you're going to skip. It tells you on the instruction sheet. It, it skips. You know, first is eight holes, then you go to like 12 holes. Matter of fact, let's just get the sheet and say it. Um, first is eight holes. So for an S, SYS, one is four holes. A two is six. And then three, four, five is seven, 11, 14. So that's how many holes you're going to skip um, to get the sliders in, and then your SYS will fit in. Okay, I'm clamped down. As you can see, plunge, plunge, plunge. So the view hole is actually going to be, if you're mark, putting tick marks on the rail, you know where to put it and plunge. Okay, so we're going to put our little vacuum schmabagel on here. We're going to plug it in. We're going to make sure I'm on automatic. I never plugged it back in. There's your holes. Okay, let me go grab that DF500 piece and I'll show you the. Okay, I'll just pick. Can we see this one right here? Let me get that down and get the zoomed in here. Okay, this is the piece that you would add from the 500 kit. So it's got the notch that accepts the Allen, oh, wrong way, sorry. That notch that accepts the Allen key. And then you would put this in here, take the supplied, and thread that puppy right into it.
and there's, and of course you would have whatever. I would have, say, another one here, another one here, maybe a domino, a domino, and now I have my bottoms. Make it, when I make my second one, I sandwich together, tighten it up, boom, you're done. In this case, I'm going to probably be using glue, but that's it. Okay. And it's removable. Dreads itself right in. Pretty nice. Now, with this, I would then remove the clamps. Then I would take this off, because now I got to go to the other side. Orienting it the same direction, so that you want 16 up and down. And then flip this over and put it however, so that now my first hole will correspond with this back hole and every hole will fall in the same general, the same direction, not general direction, which I was about to say, the same direction. And just say for argument's sake you wanted to make, if you want, just say you were having a long board and you wanted to put something in the middle, I'll show you a quick, let me just throw this back in here, I'll show you a quick trick. Say you wanted to get holes now in the middle, but you can only get 110 millimeters out of this. You can actually reverse this. Say you wanted to come out further. So you can actually put it onto this, or you can put it onto that. Extend this piece out more. So I'm going to do 100 millimeters on both of them. 100 millimeters. Have to pardon my eyes here. Oop. It would be straight and it wouldn't be fair. Alright, so now you have your board here, you can go backwards. Tighten it down there. Tighten it down here. See, instead of going this way, you could do it backwards. And now, once you clamp it down, and of course you're going to be coming from that way down, your, as you can see, actually let me get this taken apart so you can see it a little better. You see now? So you can actually adjust this so that you can be dead center of the board from this way and then come on this side and be within your 110 millimeters. So you could do a fairly decent sized board with three pins in the middle and on the end. So by just reversing these, because as you can see on the first, they, no, they went on like that. But as you can see, you ain't making it. Let me zoom it in a little bit. You see, you're not making it. But you take your measurement how you want it, then you can reverse it. You can even put it to this here, which gives you another like 55 millimeters. But that is nice and stable right here. And then up against it, boom, lock them in. You got your mark, you put your clamps on, you're still at the, you're still at your, so you get it, you make sure you bottom out because you want to be at the same 16. Up and down. Clamp it, make your holes. It's a very nice system. I use the uh, Craig uh, shelf pin system. Let me just grab my cigar here. The Craig shelf pin system is great 
good to use, uh, fast, especially if you're gonna put it inside a cabinet, and make some more new holes. But if you build a casework, or on this, what I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna build another set of drawers for the SYS system. Um, it works out great, and you know, five millimeter. So, um, okay, what's new? Well, got the air conditioning vented, and as you can see, I'm not sweating. It's about 73 degrees in this garage, and I insulated, yeah, I'll swing the camera around, I don't know if you can see it, but you see the door? I totaled three sheets. I insulated the whole door. I just gotta uh, glue up some. Uh, I picked up that um, Milwaukee blower. I didn't want a, the gas blower anymore. One, I could use it without, um, I could use, I don't have to start it up, it's not that loud. I can blow the garage out perfectly. But it's, it's real nice in here. I'm very pleased. Uh, yeah, the um, COA was never gonna approve the air handler outside. I spoke to someone that's on the board and um, they, they would have never approved it because they would have seen it. So, uh, what else should I get new here? Hmm. I picked up, uh, the uh, three-quarter inch St Stanley 750 series. So now I got quarter, half inch, three-quarter. Uh, I've been futzing with the dovetails. I picked up a very nice wheel marking gauge from Wood River. Um, a lot better than the one that I had. Nice beauty about this one is it nests into its marking. It's got really nice etched markings on it, but you know, you're always going to mark your, you know, just say you want to. That's the way you, you set your, you don't go by the, you set it like that. And now. You have three quarters of an inch. Nice. Very nice. All movable, all, it's got a nice reverse thread on it. Then it nests right back in. And then, um, oh, check this out, let me find it. Hold on a second here. Where the heck did I put it? I found this. It's from Thanos. It's a mini Sustainer Lodge. It's the uh, Sustainer TT Lock 3 Lodge. So, eh, Woodcraft, 34 bucks. I looked at it, I said, well, I guess I gotta have it. I'll find, a, I'll find something for it, but it's pretty nice. Double the size of the other uh, Sustainers, the minis. And it's not black. I like the white one. The, um, or whatever color that is. So, all right, YouTube. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope this answered a lot of questions um, and comments. And um, again, um